Of course, those uh, in Israel with the most direct stake in the outcome of these events are the some 80,000 uh, residents of communities along the Israel-Lebanon border who have been evacuated uh, uh, a little bit southward to stay out of the line of Hezbollah fighter. Well, one of them is joining us now, Batchen Lavi. She is a resident of uh, the town of Kiryat Shmona who was evacuated uh, to Moshav Livnim, also in northern Israel too, maybe a little south of that. But more important, she's a member of the group Lobby 1701, which sent this letter to President Biden and other U.S. Uh, officials, calling on them to give, quote, full support to the government of Israel to act with the necessary force and means to guarantee our safety and security. If Lebanon is unable to properly implement U.N. Security Council Resolution 1701 to the extent that we deserve and demand to provide a basic sense of security, we will relentlessly pressure our government to solve this issue through military means. Uh, Bachen, is that message getting across? Because there are some in Israel who feel that the U.S. parking the Sixth Fleet and its warships uh, off the coast of Lebanon was not only to try to deter Hezbollah, but also, in a sense, to deter the Israeli government from acting more forcefully against Hezbollah. Actually, it's true. Good evening, everyone. Um, I'm very glad to be here today to talk about the action and what we do in Lobby 1701. But your question is actually uh, one I want to tell back that we sent this letter uh, to the Biden government uh, administration, uh, and the exact purpose was to emphasize the failure of this attempt to give us uh, a kind of a solution, a diplomatic solution, with this idea uh, of uh, put, put the line inside Israel. We want a buffer that will be out of Israel, in the Lebanon territory, and not what we have now, because what we have now, it's it's like it's impossible, it's un, unimaginable reality. The situation is not it's not possible because we are can, cannot live in our homes. We are actually kicked out out of our homes in a government decision, and now, as you said, uh, I'm I'm staying for the in the last three months with my family in Moshav Livnim, you were right, it's next to the Kinneret, it's still in the north, but the problem is that we cannot go back into our houses, we cannot go back with our children and sleep quietly at night. Just like you said. Okay, so obviously you feel the government, the U.S. policy approach has not proven effective to this point. Let's talk about the Israeli government approach, which has been more or less to allow uh, this sort of uh, tit-for-tat fire across the border at the expense of residents of the North like yourself in order to contain the conflict. Uh, obviously there are voices in the Israeli government that are expressing frustration now against his policy, even in the cabinet. Uh, there are voices, though, who say... What else can be done? Are we going to have a full-scale war with Hezbollah at the same time we're engaged in this conflict in Gaza? So what is your what is your response? I should say, what is the response of the Lobby 1701 to those voices? Look, it's obvious that we cannot uh, contain two, two sides of war together. I understand that we have to finish, the Lobby understands that we have to finish the war down in Gaza, but... Through the way, we are almost three months out of our houses, out of our homes, out of our communities. And this is a very hard situation. But we say to our government, as well as the government governments in the world, I, we know that the uh, United States and France are putting their hands in this attempt to create some diplomatic solution. The, our, our say, that's what we want to say that we have to know that our government is taking a stand and telling us, guys in the north, we're going to help you with that. We're not going to bring you home like that. It's impossible to go home like that. We have Hezbollah soldiers standing on the border and watching us every day, every night. And we saw that before this war, by the way. So it was like obvious. So for now, now for us, it's like more obvious. Right. We want to talk about the responsibility of our government and the responsibility of the powers, the United States, as I said before, and the French, we know that the diplomatic solution is not the only solution. We want, we want our government to give a statement that say, we're going to help you. It's not going to stay like this. We're going to have, we're going to do some things that will help you feel 
and not just feel the, the, the feeling of the security. We want a real security in the northern border of Israel. Right. I just want to ask on a personal level, you from Kiryat Shmona, those with, uh, who know their history or those who have just been lived long enough like me remember it when it was here at Ketushot, the city of the Ketushot, when it was under constant attack uh, from uh, then uh, Palestinian uh, forces. How frustrating it must be for those uh, residents of Kiryat Shmona, especially those who remember those days. I think I might be, I might look like 24, but I'm not. I'm 43 years old, and I spent most of my life in a shelter. Yes. When I went back to Shabbat from the army, uh, other people, other soldiers going back to the army on Sunday, but I didn't. I remember myself many times uh, staying after Shabbat in the Miklat and not going out. We had 30 very tough years in the north border, in Kiryat Mona and other uh, places on the border. On the border. It is very, very frustrating, very. Uh, now I'm a mother, I have two children, and the uh, reality is looks looks different from when I was a teenager or a soldier. Now I have responsibility. And this is the most re- re- frustrating thing because I'm not on my own. And like me, another 8,000 people from the northern uh, border cannot go back to their, to their homes. We cannot have normal life until something is going to... Something is going to be, be, be done here. Right. Uh, we demand from our government a military action to apply the essence of 1701 to the military, the territory in Lebanon and not in Israel as it is today. All right, Bachan uh, Levi. This is our main demand. Okay, Bachan Levi, thank you for joining us uh, on, I, you very on much. I-24 News. Thank you very much.